Hello everyone, I'm your host, Derek Fox, of, you guessed it, a bunch of losers. Um, this is a special episode, we are wrapping up the year, and we got some exciting stuff. I went straight to the Instagram and Facebook and got questions from you guys that you want to know. We got a lot of great questions. We're going to cover those today. We're going to do some other fun stuff. And then I'm just going to talk about uh, kind of what happened this year with the podcast and what is to come. First of all, thank you guys for the support, not only here on YouTube, but for those of you that listen on Spotify as well. The Spotify numbers were amazing. We were in the top 5% of most shared podcasts around the world. Uh, that is tremendous. Like I couldn't believe it. So thank you guys for all of that. Um, you know, this podcast really came to me right before MasterChef All-Stars. Um, I thought that shining the light on the people that sign up for these crazy reality competition shows and getting their story, finding out their feedback, giving them more than just the 15 minutes we get. Um, and it's been huge. I mean, we've heard from some of the most amazing people and gotten to really learn about their story. I mean, everyone from Steven, obviously, and Emily. How different was Emily live on the podcast than she was on MasterChef. Um, and then venturing out, getting people like Maya from uh, Temptation Island, which is such a crazy show to be a part of anyway, um, to have someone like her tell her story. Uh, all really, really cool. Um, Steven, I think, is still my favorite interview of all time, and we'll definitely have him back again. Um and, you know, I really love when you guys suggest who you want. Um, we have had a few of those in the comments, people saying, have this person, have that person. Um, know that we are working on it. When you make those suggestions, we are reaching out to those people. So, yeah, get make those comments, uh, submit those submissions, and we are doing our best to find them. Uh, we have a lot of cool people lined up for the new year. I don't know if you guys have watched... Uh, the Circle at all. I had Chris on from The Circle, but we've got Sammy coming on. We've got Shuby coming on. Both of them OGs from the first season of The Circle. And also, I love this show so much, I might actually apply or audition to be on this show. Um, who else do we have in the new year? We have some people from Drink Masters. I don't know if you've seen that show on Netflix. I love this show. Um... They do such amazing things with cocktails that they make my talent as a chef feel inferior. So uh, you got to check out Drink Masters. It's been, it's a fun show and it's been really cool that we have people from that show that want to be on. So um, you guys might have also seen multiple uh, studios this year as we've gone through interviewing people. The... First studio was a friend's recording studio um, here in the Valley in Los Angeles. And shout out to Kevin for letting us use his studio. Amazing person. Uh, but it was a huge production. We had to load in cameras. We had to load in audio every time, lighting. Um, so that made it very challenging for every time we wanted to do a podcast. Uh, then we found a studio in Culver City that we've been using as the main one, and it's super cool. It's set up. Mike is doing an awesome job uh, running that studio, so we love filming there. And then also, I spend some of my time in Dallas, Texas, so we found a studio in Dallas, and that's where you've seen like Bree um, and then Chris from uh, The Circle, and we had Shane the Train and Newton. They came in, so those are our Dallas episodes. Uh, and then down in Austin, when I went and visited Michael, uh, we found a cool studio in Austin. Uh, and to Michael at the Austin studio, I know I still need to send you the money for mailing me my jacket back. I'm sorry for taking forever on that. Uh, I just don't use PayPal, so I got to sign up and all that shit. Anyway, uh, Austin studio. So 
we have three studios around the country, Dallas, Austin, and here in Los Angeles. So also think about that when submitting talent. If you know people that have been on reality competition shows in Dallas or Austin or here in L.A., send them our way. Uh, we're going to sign them up. All right. Speaking of your submissions, let's answer some questions. Lee Henderson. Uh, Lee asked, would you ever have Chef Ramsey on? So here's the deal. I have talked to production. We do want to have judges of some of these shows come on and chat because I would love to get their perspective. Life is all about getting a different perspective and learning from it. Um, I think that would be the most epic land in the history of a sit-down podcast, getting Chef Ramsey on. I know he's done Hot Ones, which was crazy and ridiculous. Um, but I think uh, a slower pace really get to have his perspective of what it takes to put on these competition shows. I think Gordon Ramsay would be an awesome get. Uh, he's on the list. One day. We can hope, right? You know what it'll take? You guys liking, subscribing, and sharing. I know it's so cheesy when we say this, but now that I'm on YouTube with a podcast, it means so much when you like, subscribe, and share. So if we want to get to Gordon Ramsay, we got to get these numbers up, right? Okay, next question. Jen X counter ass. I don't know. <laughs> Jen X, have you ever felt like going back to strictly music? I think that would be a shame, wouldn't it? All this food that I'm cooking, we wouldn't want that to go to waste. Uh, listen, the real answer is, I miss, I miss playing music every day. Um, I have my drums stacked up in the other room. I walk by them every day and they are a reminder that this food journey has to be everything and it has to make it, this podcast has to make it, the cookie has to make it, um, all the chef stuff I do, it all has to work because I gave up a very fun and rock and roll music career uh, for all this, but this feels more rock and roll than ever, and I'm really enjoying all of it. So I do miss it, but I'm never going strictly back. But maybe one day in the future, I do collaborate with some musicians and make some more music. Uh, that could and will definitely happen. Rachel Rose, uh, she asks, what's the dish you hate making the most? That's a good question. Um, I don't hate anything. I think hate is a strong word. Uh, but I do, it's kind of funny. I love how much people love my puff pastry cage. But I absolutely am so tired of making it. <laughs> like, it's really like playing your hit as an artist night after night after night. That cage is difficult to make. It's very temperamental. Um, and I dislike making it a lot. But I love how everyone responds to it. Uh, so I guess I won't ever stop making it. But it is definitely a pain. Um, also, potatoes pave. Another amazing dish. But takes forever. Oh, also from Rachel. She got a back-to-back. -back. What three things do you value most in life? Uh, salt, pepper, and oxygen. I don't know. Is that fun? <laughs> I think we need all three of those. Biggest inspiration and why? This is from is, Rachel. I didn't even notice. You've sent so many questions. <laughs> this is the Rachel segment. Uh, biggest inspiration and why? That is a tough one because I take inspiration from many. Um, it's... I don't think there's one biggest, I mean, in the food the food world, obviously, Gordon Ramsay is the biggest uh, chef inspiration. Travis Barker was my biggest music inspiration. Uh, Rob Dyrdek is my biggest entrepreneur inspiration. Um, I look at all three of those guys and, and continued to be inspired to this day. So, um, but I also get inspired by, like, the underdog the person that's just risking it all to make something happen. I just think there's so many things every day we can be inspired by. So 
Uh, but those to answer your question, those three um, the most. So this whole year, uh, I tried to we tried. I tried. Production team tried. We tried to get sponsors. Um, getting people to pay you to do a podcast is actually really hard right now because there's so many podcasts. Um, <laughs> so aside from monetizing, we reached out to a lot of companies. But I did not book any sponsors this year. Hopefully next year has more in store. But to have a little fun, here is a sponsor. This is a fake sponsor. We're doing a fake sponsor right now uh, for a little laugh. So here we go. (laughs) Here we go. This episode is brought to you by the Ice Fryer. Do you have a job that you want to quit? but leave a lasting impression, order the ice fryer. It's a 25 gallon fryer and a large bag of ice. When the fryer is at 400 degrees, drop in the bag of ice and quickly hand in your notice. And I mean quick. Use code ICEFOX at checkout to get a free bag of ice. (laughs) The ice fryer. Uh, (laughs) Uh, If any of you know, if you put ice in a fryer, it basically explodes. So that would definitely be your last day at that job. Dr. Bambougie, first dish I ever made. Um, Okay, the actual first dish I ever cooked, I was seven years old and I made macaroni and cheese because my babysitter didn't know how. And my little brother and I were hungry. And so I got up on a step stool, I followed the instructions, made macaroni and cheese. And needless to say, that babysitter was fired. N B H A G W A T one. I don't know what that stands for. That's the screen name. The question is: Do you still keep in touch with anyone from season six of Master Chef judges contestants? Um, yes, uh, I talk with Graham Elliott here and there. You might have seen on my Instagram. Uh, hung out with him in Hawaii. Um, Steven, I still talk to and have on the podcast, obviously. And we're also cooking up something else coming pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, Who else? Uh, I talk with Katrina. And Katrina, I owe you a phone call. Um, Who else from season six? Jesse. Still talk with Jesse. And then I talk to other people from other seasons. Uh, DeAndre from season seven. Uh, I still talk to Amanda here and there on social media. Uh, You've seen Felix on the podcast. Uh, Yeah, Adrian on the podcast. I actually work with Adrian a lot. He's been helping me with gigs lately. So, um, yeah, we're all all family. Once you're in the MasterChef uh, world, you have a MasterChef family always. This comes from my first interview ever. Although it wasn't the first one to air, it was the first interview I did uh, with Travis Mogans. You may know him as the Nomad Cook, Uh, the Canadian Missing Front Teeth, the Big Stoner. What else can we call him? Travis wants to know, who's the biggest loser you've interviewed? I don't know how to quantify that. Uh, If he means by like biggest, tallest, uh, takes up most amount of space. (laughs) Travis, that would be you, bud. (laughs) You big Canadian lumberjack. Uh, (laughs) I don't know. Man, if we talk about Instagram following, I think uh, Chris from The Circle might have the biggest following. I'll tell you what, though. When we get Sammy on, and we get Shuby on, those will be our two new biggest. Joe Joy just wanted to say that I'm her favorite master chef. Uh, Thank you so much, Joe Joy. I appreciate that. Well, since we're on the topic of Canadians, uh, a Canadian's cooking, a Canadian's cooking wants to know favorite Canadian ingredient. I like, is there more than one? (laughs) I know maple syrup and Canadian bacon is not bacon. Uh, it's just ham. So what else you got? Snow? I'll tell you what though. When I went up and cooked with Travis for the first time in Canada, we did pop-ups, it was snowing, and then people, they actually sell this in Canada. They take a little stick, and they roll it 
in like sugar and or snow. They roll it in snow and then or in maple syrup and then in snow they make like this little like maple syrup snow cone stick. Uh, <laughs> wildly delicious. Uh, very popular up in Canada. So if you're ever in Canada, you gotta check those things out. Mom crazy three kids. Yeah, my mom is crazy and had three kids. Uh, so, but this is not. This question is not from my mom. This that's this person's screen name. Mom crazy three kids. What's your go to Christmas cookie? Uh, I don't like. I don't like cookies. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I actually make an amazing Christmas cookie that I call Naughty and Nice. It's a layered cookie. The base is a s'mores cookie, and then on top of that, I put a peppermint dark chocolate cookie dough, and they bake and fuse together, and then I top it with peppermint chocolate crumbles. It's insane. Uh, you can order that from my website, epicmegacookie.com. Speaking of sponsors, let's go back to another sponsor. Okay, this episode is brought to you by The Potato Launcher. Your significant other wants french fries but doesn't want to go out? Forget DoorDash, blast them with The Potato Launcher. Fries instantly to your face. Uh, you got a pesky squirrel problem? Blast them with a potato launcher. Neighbor's music is too loud? Potato Launcher. Uh, your friend is a carnivore and doesn't eat veggies? No sweat. Anything can fit in the potato launcher. Please don't put small children or house pets in the launcher. We will not be responsible. Potatolauncher.com. This is a fake advertisement. Please don't do any of this. <laughs> you guys ever done a, launched a potato launcher? They are a blast. Uh, I was like 13. We were in my friend's backyard shooting potatoes over the house into traffic. Uh, we hit a cop car. And we hid in the basement of his house for about four hours until we knew we were in the clear. I think statue of limitations, I can't get in trouble for that now. Okay, more questions. C. Murfer. Do you guys get any insights at all into what each MasterChef challenge would be? Um, the mystery boxes, we never have any idea. Um, and pretty much... Everything we find out when you guys see us find out. Um, sometimes Gordon Ramsay will make hints. And then we spend all night wondering what that hint was trying to figure it out. And it's always a mislead. Um, so no, not really. Autumn McDermott. Uh, when it comes to steaks, what's your favorite cut? Man, I actually, I think I go by my mood. Uh, sometimes I'm in the mood for a ribeye, sometimes I'm in the mood for a filet. Uh, I very rarely ever want a hanger steak, and I will never say no to a New York strip. Um, I don't know why I just turned into a baseball announcer on that one. <laughs> uh, I love a good classic filet, uh, always. That's probably my favorite. Ribeye is a close second, though. Vishali, I hope I said that right. Vishali, in another universe between Steven and you taking trophy from MasterChef season 12 in the finale. I don't know if that's a question, but that's definitely a universe that I wish I was in. Uh, Steven and I head to head is what the world wanted to see. Fox, why did you fuck around and not make that happen? I think more than anything, they. MasterChef should do a special episode and bring Steven and I back head-to-head, -head, three rounds, appetizer, entree, dessert, and see what happens. Let's do it for 100K. Come on, MasterChef. And then we're going to edit this into a reel and post it. We'll share it. We'll get it to go viral. We'll make it happen. KBMK2102. Will you have another chance for Hell's Kitchen? You were robbed. Uh, for those of you that do know, I did apply for Hell's Kitchen. They were 50-50 on having me on. Uh, and then the final verdict was they did not want crossover. And then a few months later, I was cast for MasterChef All-Stars. Um, yeah, I would do Hell's Kitchen. I think they would be shocked that I could whoop some ass. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. I'll tell you this one. Everyone. Quit asking chefs what their favorite thing to make is. <laughs> we don't have a favorite. We're cooking for our lives always. Um, all right, everyone. 
those were the questions I had. This is the end of the year wrap up for a bunch of losers. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, sharing. Please keep doing it. It helps so much. And hopefully next year we can get an actual sponsor and I don't have to advertise things like an ice fryer and a potato launcher. Um, I hope you enjoyed these live questions and the little insight of who we have to come. Um, some other people we have on our radar, Drew Lynch from America's Got Talent. He is absolutely hysterical and we definitely want to get him on. Uh, Leslie, I've been talking with Leslie from season five. He wants to come on, but he's scared he's going to say something bad about Gordon Ramsay, which I don't know why he's scared of Gordon Ramsay. We've all dealt the wrath. His bark is louder than his bite. Um, who else do we got coming? Just a whole bunch. We have a whole bunch. We have a Bachelorette. Um, we've got more American Idols. All of it is on its way, and I just continue. I just will continue to forever be grateful that you guys love to relish in my misery of losing all right all right losers signing off make sure you're following us liking subscribing if you like this little alien hoodie epicmegacookie.com we got cookies candles and merch and i will see you guys in the new year with a new interview